Welcome everyone to the Hello World Guy and this is the first episode of our new series in which we are going to basically create a better version of the Mario game that we had created earlier. So we have basically did a very basic Mario series earlier on but this time we are going to create a better system from the ground up which means our application is going to be our game is going to be more scalable and uh, just uh, organized better and also is going to have a lot more features. We are going to implement stuff like enemies and AI and even try recreating some of the original Mario levels. So with that let's get started with this new series. So basically I have created a blank new project uh, from uh, like this, this has only got a main.cpp file as you can see and nothing else and this is just a blank project and uh, I have integrated SFML already and we are going to show you how to do everything from the beginning so you don't really need to go and watch the uh, previous Mario tutorial series to understand how this works. You know this is going to be done from the complete ground up from the scratch. You don't need to uh, worry about uh, anything and you can watch this series. So let's go ahead and and get started so first of all we are going to include the sfml headers sfml slash graphics dot h and if you don't have sfml set, uh, set up you can kind of download it on their website if you have any issues you can watch the uh, first part of the first episode of the uh, first Mario series that we did earlier you can watch that if you are stuck and uh, for the setup and then you don't need to watch anything else from that series if you want to create a more advanced if you are still a beginner I would recommend first doing that series and then this one but we are going to explain everything here as we go along so some contents, uh, concepts might be too advanced so you can see I've created a main function here uh, and I'm going to create a sf colon colon window inside of here and uh, this this has a lot of different constructors and you can see we are the one we are going to use is this one which asks us for a video mode a string title and uh, some context settings and a mode but we won't worry about those we will just leave those at default so for the video mode let's uh, uh, basically uh, the video mode will determine how our screen will look and uh, you can use it to make your screen for example full screen or something but we will basically just start off with a very basic uh, uh, screen with say 1200 by 900 dimensions you can of course set the dimensions to whatever you like so let's go ahead and do that and uh, for the title let's just go ahead and call it uh, for example better mario and you can of course set the window title uh, that's going to be displayed you can set it to whatever you want it to be so let's go ahead and type that out and uh, that works very well so we have got basically a main function and we have created a window and this will actually create the window as well so for now actually displaying stuff and doing that thing what we will have to do is we will have to write a loop because everything that happens in a game happens in a constant loop so we can create a while loop here and for the condition we are going to say window dot is open so we want basically our application to be running as long as the window is open and as soon as the window closes we want the application to close as well so we will say while window dot is open and uh, let's create actually another variable of type sf colon colon clock called uh, clock or you can call it game clock or whatever you like uh, so the reason we are doing this is because some people might have a computer that's slower while some people might have a computer that's faster and if we are running our app on a faster computer uh, I'm by the way I'm going to call this delta clock because the name clock sometimes causes uh, problems so as I was saying if we someone has a computer that's faster Mario will actually move faster on that computer and everything will happen faster and that's of course not the desired behavior we want uh, everything to run like at the actual same speed in side of the game but of course uh, those who have higher frame rates could enjoy the better stuff so what we do is we use a clock and create for example a float called delta time and set that to delta clock dot restart dot uh, restart is a function and restart returns the amount of time that passed since the clock ran and we can say dot as seconds because this is a type sf colon colon time which uh, can be used to represent the time in a bunch of different things so we will get that as seconds so with this delta time the idea basically is that uh, since we have got this is basically the amount of time that one frame is taking to execute so we can multiply all calculations by that and that should essentially allow us to uh, pretty much do everything we want to without any problems uh, if, uh, and execute that as a constant speed so I'm going to uh, now go ahead and create a sf colon colon event called event and we are going to use this by the way you should use uh, an initializer syntax to basically initialize this so that you got no warnings from visual studio and uh, 
the idea with events is that uh, the operating system will issue many events and we can we need to actually get those events for our window to be registered as responsive and the function to get the event is poll event which returns a boolean indicating whether the event was empty or, or there are more events or the event queue is empty so we will basically poll the event until all of the events are done and uh, we are going to pass the event which uh, actually will uh, is a reference to the event it gets a reference to the event and then changes that accordingly so now what we are going to do is we can handle there are a bunch of different events for keystrokes and a bunch of different stuff and we can handle all events we want here so first of all we will begin by handling uh, you can see that event has a bunch of different stuff here but what we want to get is the type so we are going to begin by handling the event when the window is closed because right now pressing the close button won't actually close our window so we will say if event dot type is equal to ss colon colon event we colon colon closed and closed here is an enum so we are going to basically do that and if that is the case then we are going to basically cause the close method on our window and that should actually also end this loop because uh, on the next iteration the window won't be open and that would end our app as well so that would work and you can of course add more else statements and uh, add uh, handle a bunch of different event types as well so i can say event dot type is equal to sf colon colon event colon colon uh, for example key pressed so we can also have a key pressed event so if we go ahead and do that then you can go ahead and uh, uh, basically handle all different keys here so we, there is an event dot key variable and we can use that to do input and stuff but we only need the close event for now so that's the only event we are going to put here so now let's go ahead and uh, uh, try to implement the actual drawing functionality now the first of all when we are drawing we want to first of all clear the window but this window has got no clear method uh, whenever we are drawing we want to first clear the window then uh, because we don't want everything from the previous frame to be on the screen so we clear the window then we draw the new stuff then we clear uh, then we display that so for, uh, to actually make it work we need to change our variable from just a simple window which is just a window and has no drawing functionalities to a render window which will allow stuff to be rendered to the screen so we will create sf colon colon render window instead and here we will say window dot clear which now exists and we can pass it a color as well optionally by default it's black which will determine the basically the background color of our window and in the end we want to call window dot display and we need to do all of our drawing to the screen inside of uh, uh, these two lines anything we do outside won't be displayed so we want to make sure that we only draw inside of this now in order to keep our program organized we can actually create a bunch of different methods for this drawing so what we can do is go up top and now we can create a void called update which will basically update the game logic and won't actually draw anything and another called render which will draw by the way uh, first let's go ahead and create a f uh, uh, another argument for update and that's going to be flow delta time and um, because we want to have delta time when we are updating for rendering we don't need that but we do need a render window to actually render stuff to the screen of course we want to put the and sign here because we want to take this as a reference and not just as a, a copy because that won't work we want to make sure we take a reference to the window so we go ahead and go and uh, do render and basically create the declarations of these uh, and uh, let's go ahead and we, we can implement these later so let's go ahead and first call these functions uh, when where they are needed now of course some people might want to just put update and render together but uh, i think separating that can be a good idea sometimes so let's go ahead and create call update here with delta time that we just uh, created the variable as you can see so we could call update with delta time and in here what we do is we go ahead and say render uh, we call the render function and uh, in here we of course pass is the window which uh, is going to be a reference to the window and we are going to basically do all of that and now we can draw and update uh, whatever we want to our uh, in our game as we want and there might this might be a good idea to separate this into a separate file to make our game more organized so i'm going to create uh, a new item here and inside of my header files and i'm going to create a header file called game.h and in here by the way this hashtag pragma once is to avoid uh, including multiple times if in this only works in visual studio so if you are using some other compiler like gcc or something then you can use the if not def plus uh, you know include guard as well and now i'm going to create a game.cpp file here uh, like that and now let's go under main.cpp and uh, basically cut these and paste that here the function declarations uh, here uh, definitions not declarations and uh, we also want to make sure that we include sfml slash graphics.hpp inside of the game.h as well 
so with that we have got this and now we are going to change the implement uh, we are of course going to include game.h here but we are going to remove the implementations of the functions from here and put those in game.cpp like that and uh, let's of course include game.h here or else it won't be uh, right and now let's do that and you can see all errors go away and now we have got a nicely organized uh, system for basically uh, doing our game functionality so now let's begin by actually trying to draw something to test stuff out so let's create a sf colon colon circle shape you can create of course anything you want and there are a bunch of different shapes and stuff that you can use in ssml to draw different things but we are going to for just testing create a circle shape called circle and uh, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, use this constructor which requires a radius and a count which is um, uh, basically how many segments a circle has and, and the higher it is of course the higher the quality of the circle for the radius let's say 300 I think 500 might be too much and uh, what we can do is in the render uh, function uh, you can actually increase the uh, segments as well but uh, I won't do that for now in the render function I'm going to say window dot uh, draw and for uh, we are going to pass it our circle and that should draw that circle and uh, if you open up circle shape you can see it, in it inherits from shape which inherits from drawable and a window render window essentially requires any drawable to draw stuff to the screen so with that I, I think it works quite well and now we are going to go ahead and create a void called begin and uh, this because uh, we want to do something when the game starts as well and let's just not make it have any uh, parameters and here we can initialize our circle to have a position in the center of the screen but in order to have a position in the center of the screen we can use set position but we don't actually know the size of the screen and we cannot calculate the center so what we, we will do is we will actually make it so that we take a reference to a render window in the begin function as well and we are not doing of course mm, doing uh, we are not going to do any drawing to the window uh, but we are only going to use it for querying data so we are going to make it constant because we are only reading the window and not writing so we are going to make this a constant reference and we can only make it a window and not a render window since uh, we are not rendering anything uh, we just should keep it as generalized as possible now in the actual begin implementation we can say circle dot uh, set position uh, now the what if we put like the center of the window here this won't work because the circles position uh, you can go ahead and create a vector 2f and put whatever you want here maybe calculate it from the window but the circle's position is from the top left corner of the circle and not the middle of the circle so in order to fix that we can actually set the origin of the circle to the center so we can say circle dot set origin and uh, we are going to call that set origin function and uh, um, for this we want to basically pass it a vector 2f which is uh, a two dimensional vector which can say uh, consist of an x and y value and uh, we are going to pass it the circles uh, let's say radius on both sides and since the radius is the half size of the circle that should actually make it exactly in the center and we are going to pass this for both x and y and uh, that should set the origin and now we don't need to uh, we can of course uh, create our own vector but we don't actually need to do that what we can do is we can just take window dot get size which gives us the size of the window and uh, like that and we can divide that by two so we can do that of course this gives a error but we need to first cast this window to a vector 2f because this size is a vector 2i vector 2f means a vector of floats two floats x and y while that were uh, those were uh, unsigned integers vector to u so we of course we want to call the begin function here with our window and that vector 2 will essentially cause the circle to be centered so if I press uh, f5 uh, which is a shortcut to basically run my program right now if you set everything correctly what you should see is that we get a, a circle in the center of a screen uh, so let's go ahead and uh, wait for it to compile and you can see that uh, our terminal opens up and the window also opens up and you can see we have got a white circle in the center of a screen so you can see uh, the it is in the center but uh, the quality of the circle is a bit low because the segments are only 30 by default uh, since our circle is pretty big we, it might be good to change the uh, center uh, change the those we are also going to change the fill color and we are going to say sf colon colon color colon colon uh, say yellow for example to change the color of the circle and we are going to make the uh, amount of segments the circle has to 360 so that uh, and we are going to put 360 u after this which signifies that this is an unsigned integer and not a signed integer 
so that works and that means that we should get a higher quality yellow circle in the center of the screen and you can see that works we have essentially got a circle and that's perfectly in the center so yeah we basically did a small demo in this video with how our mm, circle is basically working and this is pretty much it for this video in the next video we will actually start implementing some useful constructs for drawing stuff to the screen so stay tuned for that i will see you in the next one and bye